the steeplechase this morning. Do not adjust your sets. He was fourth in the steeplechase exactly eight hours ago. Gisemo goes in this one, and uh, that for Tanzania, but his best only 13.56. The other man, athlete Malaki, 13.47, his best. Rama Kokoana of Lesotho hasn't broken 14 minutes. There's Jacob Kiplimo, world record holder for the half marathon. He won the 10,000 meters here. Hasn't run a 5,000 this year. This is his debut over 12 and a half laps for this year. Solomon Ziossi, 24th in the Commonwealth Games back in 2014. Paulus of Namibia, Daniel Paulus. He's a, a 13.54 performer. There's Pat Diva, NCAA champion, last year over 10,000 metres. 27.23 back in March, but hasn't really progressed since then. George Beamish of New Zealand, 10th in the world indoors over 3,000. Could be used for a slowish race. Uh, Yeshneel Karan of uh, Fiji. 15.26 is lifetime best. William and Ponsa of Ghana. No time for him at all. And there is Mark Scott. Watch him. He's a fierce racer. Took a wonderful bronze medal at the World Indoors over 3,000 back in March in Belgrade. Matt Ramsden. He's a very quick 1,500 metre runner, a 3.51 mile of the Australian. He could be a danger. The Tanzanian Lazaro has never broken 14 minutes. Cornelius Kemboy of Kenya. Well, he's never run for Kenya before. Selected because he was third in the Kenyan trials. He's earned his place. Sable, well, he took a fantastic silver medal for India this morning and a national record in that steeplechase. He's got to be on tired legs. Rainer for Australia goes there. He's strong. 27-15 has the national record for the Aussies. And Nimu Bona of uh, Rwanda is there as well. He's a 13-15 performer. And Nicholas Kip of Korea Kalemi, Kimeli, the world number one on the inside. He won in Rome earlier on this summer in the Diamond League in 12.46, making him one of the quickest men in history. Ninth in the Commonwealth Games four years ago. So, 20 starters then, 12 and a half laps of... Well, how will this one pan out? Four years ago, and by the way, not a single finalist from that Gold Coast uh, 5,000 four years back is in this race. Not a single one. Joshua Chepsky, world record holder at 5,000 and 10,000 since uh, 2018, isn't here. But in 2018, the 3,000 was reached in a pedestrian 8.47. They almost literally jogged the first 3,000 metres. Then the fourth kilometre things picked up. That was at 2.38. And the fifth kilometre was lightning fast at 2.25. There'll be one or two men here, I think, Rob Walker, who'll be looking for perhaps a similar sort of pattern in this race. I know that Matt Ramsden, a 3.34-1500 guy, would be delighted if the first half of this was on the slow side. He certainly would, Tim. He is a big, powerful performer. He's just on the right of picture now in the middle. I can't believe Sadler has uh, taken his place in the starting lineup after that epic silver medal in the steeplechase. Talking about the Indian just running in the middle of the group, now just on the left of your picture. The other interesting dynamic here, Tim, I know you do a lot of commentary on the Diamond League circuit. When Camelli and Kropp ran that Rome Diamond League, it was absolutely sensational. They both, they tore chunks out of each other and produced the two fastest times in the world this year. And then you pull into the mix Jacob Kiplimo trying to become only the fourth man to do the double, camera focusing on the back of the pack, Kiplimo's in the middle. I think it would suit Kiplimo if it was slow because he might still be feeling tired after the 10,000 metres. Well, Krop and Kimeli at the front, and I think there's an arrangement here. That was a 63 lap, it's quick. We are, this is the last attempt. She's got the bronze medal, the Canadian. She's going to end with the bronze medal. Gillian Weir in the third round through 67-35. A smile from a support team. But Canada win bronze with Gillian Weir, which means Julia Ratcliffe of New Zealand has the silver medal and has one more throw to try and stop Cameron Rogers of Canada winning the title. But Rogers, 74-08. Ratcliffe have to throw a lifetime best to stop the Canadian winning. One more throw. Well, it lands on the bronze medal winning line of Gillian Weir. 
She's going to pick up a silver medal, Julia Ratcliffe of New Zealand, which means Cameron Rogers of Canada is your champion. And she looks pretty pleased with that. High fives all round between the gold medal winner, Cameron Rogers, who will come up for one final throw. And Julia Ratcliffe with that throw of 69-63. She finishes with 66-93. Yeah, quite rightly, very, very proud. So bronze, silver and gold is sorted. A hug between the silver and the bronze medalist, Ratcliffe and Weir. And here's your champion, Amrin Rogers. Second at the World Championships recently in Oregon. The world number four this year is 77-67. She has the gold medal. Can she increase her games record of 74-68? that she set in qualifying. She's had a couple of really big throws here, Rogers. The gold medal's hers. Can she go further? Well, it's way over the 70 metre line again. It's gonna be close, you know. She gets the white flag. She's celebrating for the gold medal. That's understandable. One of the big favorites here at the Commonwealth Games. The one's awaiting the distance, though. Has she set a new games record? Has she gone further than 74.68? Not quite, I don't think. It's coming through. 73.89. No new games record, but the goal goes to Cameron Rogers of Canada. A sneaky hop over the... <laughs> That's nice. A hop over the advertising boards. Hugs all round. It was expected, but you've still got to come and deliver. 74.08, Canada picks up the gold. And Cameron Rogers with a big smile and deservedly so. Well, Kenya in one and two, it slowed through this second kilometre. They went through one, Ken, 2.39, and were on 13.15 uh, tempo in the opening stages, but they have slowed pretty dramatically. Nimu Bona is up there in uh, third place. The two Kenyans taking it out of uh, been playing a strange game because the pace early on from Krop and Kimeli was pretty healthy Rob Walker and then they've suddenly decided to ease right back in the throttle and they're bunching badly and that's not comfortable for the guys further back in the pack there's a little bit of nudging and shoving going on yes yeah, a strange decision from them having initially thought that they would go quite hard do you know the other Australian we haven't spoken about a lot Tim Jack Rayner, the camera's focusing in on Ramsden. He's an excellent 1500 metre runner for Australia. But you know, just up on the shoulder of the leaders is Jack Rayner, national champion over the half marathon. And you know what? He smashed his 5000 PB in Oslo, talking about the Australian, the mustachioed Australian, just tucked in behind the two Kenyans in fourth place. 1306 in Oslo. So maybe if it's slow early on and then gets quick again. Maybe he could be the Australian to feature. He looks pretty comfortable in fifth at the moment. Well, they're lapping athletes already. That's how slow it is. 5.23 at 2,000, at 2.44, that second kilometre up to 2.39. So much was promised, but uh, it is pretty bizarre. Nipu Bona, a 13.15 athlete, pretty useful. The third Kenyan beginning to move up to the fore, and Kiplimo just shadowing that lead group he's back in about seventh or eighth place at the moment the uh, Namibian or Tanzanian rather Joshua there back in about eight Mark Scott tucked in on the inside staying in contact with everything up front and Pat Diva as well is there for England NCAA champion last year ran a really quick 10,000 back in March in California but uh, hasn't really shown anything like that sort of form since a couple of 1320 runs in May and June in the USA but a little disappointing really as the season was supposed to reach its climax there were so many fast races in the USA in March and April and May in the Californian sunshine and many athletes can't replicate that when it really matters in the meat of the summer the pace just beginning to pick up I sense a little bit Kenya now in one two three and I wonder if from here onwards, the middle of the race, more or less, they're going to start turning the screw. So many great talking points here, Tim. There's only been one clean sweep in the 5,000 metres. You were involved in it in 1986. Steve Ovet, Jack Buckner, and you got the bronze. And they are out front, but they may not have this all their own way, you know, because Jacob Kiplimo in fifth place will be full of confidence after that magnificent victory 
in the 10,000 metres and I'm keeping half an eye on Mark Scott who's tucked in on the curb because although he's done great stuff over the half marathon the Englishman took a world indoor bronze over the 3,000 metres but there is a little bit of a breakaway group now with the New Zealander trying to stay on the back of that with John Gay. No wonder Gay's tired. He's been in the 3,000 steeplechase. But Kenya, 1, 2 and 3. A little bit quicker, 2.38, but they're, they're still sort of dawdling, Tim. Well, they are. That was uh, a 2.39 first kilometre, a 2.44 second kilometre, a 2.38 quicker that third kilometre. So it is, again, a little bit like Mary Marat in the uh, women's 800, a seesawing type of race. Kiplimo looks very comfortable, doesn't he, Jacob Kiplimo? Who uh, was probably a little bit disappointed with his bronze medal in the 10,000 at the World Championships. He had a bronze medal in Tokyo last year in the 10,000. He has so much strength, so much speed. He's now moving up right in behind that Kenyan trio because I'm sure he knows that pretty soon somebody will go hard. If they don't, then it becomes a glorified middle distance race because the time at 3,000 metres... Well, it was 8.01, and for many of these fellas, that's very, very slow indeed. Good to see Pat Diva right up there. Mark Scott, I hope, is just cruising at the moment. He's a great runner, Mark Scott, best of 13.05 from last year, and he's a 3.35-1500 runner too. He's got really significant speed. But at the moment, everybody dancing to the Kenyans' tune, and I'm not quite sure why. Well, maybe the man to challenge that is Jacob Kiplimo. He's on the shoulder of Nimobona and Nimobona of Rwanda. And six in the African champs over the 10,000 metres. And Kiplimo just towards the back of that picture, the Ugandan. There'll be so much excitement about his aspirations here. But he's taking on three really fast Kenyans, two of whom are the quickest in the world this year. Matt Ramsden beginning to be dropped off the back. And so too Mark Scott. It's Pat Diva of England now the highest placed of the two home athletes but this is beginning to look a little bit metronomic here and Kiplimo is sensing the danger maybe he's the only man who can stop the Kenyan clean sweep he needs to pay close attention here Tim because I wonder if we're going to see a sudden burst of acceleration as we now edge towards the finish well Kimeli leads crop in second the third Kenyan Kemboy back in uh, third place and now Kiplimo has moved into third place he's beginning to realise that the surge is on with ten and a half minutes on the clock we're looking for that four kilometre split and it will be at the end of this straight and Kimeli winding this up clearly the Kenyans have discussed this I don't think this is independent behaviour they're trying to figure out a way to unlock the dominance of Kiplimo this is 4k there it is 239 so not a super quick kilometre but uh, not a slow one either and that means that the questions are being asked now over this final two and a half laps because for these fellas this is not quick and they're moving away now and Scott is going backwards in eighth place for England I expected him to go better than that because really they've only been moving at around 13.20 pace or marginally inside that they come to uh, two laps to go now and uh, good to see Pat Diva easing away there in what fourth, fifth place but Kimeli from Krop, from Kip Lima, who looks very relaxed in third place. Yes, the Ugandan is tracking the two fastest men in the world this year. Remember, if you missed it, they were side by side, Kimeli and Krop, when they ran 12.46 in Rome. It won't be anywhere near that fast, but all three of these men are well within their comfort zone. Can Jacob Kiplimo find the raw acceleration needed he's arguably better at the 10,000 and better at the half marathon but the Ugandan in third looks very very comfortable remember he's bidding to become only the fourth man in Commonwealth history to do the 5 and 10 double at the same games Kimeli leads 500 metres to run the 10,000 metre champion he's had plenty of time to recover he should be fresh here Jacob Kiblima of Uganda in third place as they come to the bell. Will they light up the track here? 12.13, maybe 12.14 at the bell. A 62 penultimate lap. Not particularly quick. That's not really going to test fellas of this calibre. Kimeli and Krop may be playing into the hands of Kiplimo here. Or they are both surely pretty fresh if they're running some 30 seconds or so inside the tempo of their run in row. There's a wall of Kenyans now, a small wall of Kenyans in front of Kip Limo, but I fear 
I think he's going to bide his time. He's going to leave it until the home straight. Surely he won't expect to come wide. He's going with Crop now around the outside. Look at that. Hanging onto his coattails. Stride for stride. The Kenyan's kicking hard. He's the world record on the half marathon. Does he have the speed to go with these two? Kimalian Crop flailing arms now. And here comes Khalif Diblimo. Like a machine. Like a metronome. Easing past them. But is he going to get there? At the line. He is. It's the double for Uganda again. Kiblimo makes it a win at the 10,000 and a win in the 5,000. And the Kenyans were out thought and out raced. Mark Scott, his rally comes home for a fabulous fourth place some way back. But my word, what a race that was up front. Rayner coming home as well. Up in the top eight. Kiblimo's time 13.08 after a strange, strange race. The time at 3,000 and the 8.01. That was outside 13.20 tempo. A super fast last lap there, bringing Kip Limo victory by the tiniest of margins. The Kenyans did everything they possibly could as we see some of the back markers coming through. He won by, uh, what, 9 one hundredths of one, 11 one hundredths of a second. Kimeli taking the silver, dropped the bronze, and he was, uh, what, about two metres down. And Mark Scott, 13.19, a season's best for him. He uh, managed to ring out a really solid run, Mark Scott, from that one, when with about a mile to go, I thought he was down and out. Jacob Kiplimo is the toast of Uganda tonight, tomorrow, and for the rest of this season. He's beaten the two quickest men in the world this year, who mounted a magnificent attempt to deny him the double. Full credit to Kimeli and Krop with the silver and the bronze. But, despite the fact that it's not necessarily Jacob Kiplimo's best distance, he had enough down the home straight. He has stepped out of the shadow of his fabulous teammate Joshua Cheptegei and follows in his footsteps. Moses Kipsiro of Uganda did the double in Delhi. Joshua Cheptegei did the double on the Gold Coast. And Jacob Kiplimo has done the same here in Birmingham, where he has simply been brilliant. This new generation of African runners have this astonishing spread of ability. Where do you find the speed and the power to produce a last lap like that? 53.96, his last 400 metres. And this lad has the world record for the half marathon in Lisbon. In November last year, he went round 13.1 miles in 57.31 to improve the world record by just one second. But his 57.31 is incredibly significant. Not many years ago, anything under 60 minutes, under the hour was special for a half marathon. This is a new age. It wouldn't be uh, fair to say it is the age of the new footwear as well, which gives the athletes a massive degree of assistance. But nonetheless, the quality of the racing is what we have to respect. The uh, winning time, 13.08. Well, as I said, Kimeli and Krop have run over 20 seconds quicker than that. Still got a lap to go, this fella. But they've run over 20 seconds quicker than that. But the racing was supreme. And I love that, Rob. You know, we get too caught up with about thinking about records. I love the fact that we saw great racing. That's a sustainable quality. And we saw great racing from three very, very young men. Kimeli in second place is 23. Krop in third, even younger than that. And Jacob Kiplimo has achieved all this. And he's still only 21 years of age. Kiplimo is a huge, huge star now, as we look rightly so. The Kenyans and the Ugandans loving the celebrations. I've said this before, Uganda is such a special country. And this is a time of unprecedented success for their distance runners. Perith Chemetai, the Olympic champion in the 3,000 steeplechase, she took a bronze last night despite falling. Joshua Cheptegei successfully defended his 10,000 title in Eugene. And now Jacob Kiplimo has tasted gold twice. And listen to the crowd. The reason for the noise is that Rosfio Cisneo of the Solomon Islands is coming home here in last place, but he's been roared every single step of the way, and he's given a hero's reception in Birmingham. Well, he's wearing his rosary too. 
comes home in a time there that, well, I'm not sure uh, he'd win many park runs around the UK with all due respect, COC, but it's symbolic that he is here. Don't think he's come anywhere near his personal best. Here is that last 300 metres. Kimeli and Crop side by side, trying to keep him at bay, and that's all that was keeping him at bay because he had the speed in those legs. You can see him here screwing up his preparation for this final kick. He knew what was coming. He had plenty of time to think about it. Mentally, I thought there, with about 130 to go, maybe a gap would appear. But he swung wide, eased up behind the Kenyans. They made him work for it, made him work for every single inch. When he drew close, when he drew level here on the far side, you can see Kamele, he finds another surge. But it's not enough to deny Kiplimo the double. He wins by about half a metre. Brilliant, brilliant racing. And I was looking at the Commonwealth Games record, Rob, from Melbourne back in 2006 when Augustin Choge beat uh, uh, Buster Mottram. And boy, oh boy, was that a great race. They ran 12.56. It was an absolute humdinger in front of the uh, home crowd for the Australian. It was. And this was just as good, although it wasn't quite as fast. But Kiplimo is absolutely magnificent. He's got medals in cross country, he's got a gold on the road, he's got a world record on the road, a whole host of bronze and silver medals on the global stage over the 10,000 metres, but now he is a double Commonwealth champion and he's shown here this evening against the two fastest men in the world this year that he's got the raw speed to beat the Kenyans over three and a bit miles. This guy's range and experience is extraordinary. Well, boy, does he know how to celebrate. He enjoys himself. I love the fact he wears his heart on his sleeve. He's a lovely racer. He is world half marathon champion. He's now Commodore 5000 champion, Jacob Kiplima, ahead of the Kenyans, Kimelian Crop, silver and bronze for them. 13.08.08, a season's best for Kipley. Of course it is. It's his first 5,000 of the year.